there's one guy who's available this offseason, not through free agency, but via trade. This guy is Chris Paul. Chris Paul can probably turn any team that's on the brink of winning a championship over the hump to winning a championship. Granted, he stays healthy because that's always been his Achilles heel, heel throughout his career. Where would you like to see Chris Paul get traded? I know he's been floating around to the Knicks. And <laughs> <laughs> as, much as, as much as I don't like the idea of giving up a bunch of assets for an older aging contract in Chris Paul, you look at what he did in Oklahoma City, and it, again, it's something I alluded to in the free agency part of the show. It's not what he's going to do for you in the win-loss column, but he can really help you build something that will last. And I, I again, I'm going to compare it to the Nets here. A guy like D'Angelo Russell, who's going to be coming, going to be coming in. You're not expecting him to turn your franchise around in the win-loss column, but you look at what he did for the Nets. He served a purpose. He changed the culture, and he created Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant coming to Brooklyn. It wouldn't have happened without D'Angelo Russell, and I think that Chris yeah. Paul can be that bridging of the gap for the Knicks where you know he can not only mentor your younger players, depending on who would go on the deal, you, know, you still are going to have at least – two or three of Dennis Smith, R.J. Barrett, Frank Nittalakina, Kevin Knox, Mitchell Robinson, although they're not all guards, just having him as a mentor, leader, the things that he does, you can't, you can't teach it unless he's in the building, and it will rub off on the players in the building, and I think that that is so important. You look at a lot of the great teams in the league, and they have great cultures, and they have built something that lasts. The Miami Heat are the perfect example. They made it to the finals this year simply because they are an incredibly run organization. And I think that Chris Paul could be a step in the Knicks getting back to that. I think they're still a long ways off, but yeah. he could at least, from a player personnel standpoint, not only it would almost like be having a, another player development executive in, in there along with having a great point guard with Chris Paul for me if he goes to New York I'd be happy with the move because I feel like we'd be in the playoffs at least as the eighth seed with Chris Paul and I think Knicks fans are, are so thirsty to even take they're so thirsty to even have playoff basketball that that's like winning a championship for Chris Paul and if he, if he takes us to the playoffs in New York but honestly I love Chris Paul, and I want him to win an actual championship. So I want him to go to Milwaukee. I want him to go to Milwaukee and play with Giannis. I feel like him and Giannis, that, that's the exactly the player that Giannis needs, a Chris Paul type of guy, a guy who can shoot, slow down the tempo, be a leader, and really just play to the game and control the pace of the game. That's what Chris Paul is. He's a true point god. And I think Milwaukee could probably trade Eric Bledsoe or maybe maybe a pick or two for Chris Paul, I think that would be a good move. Because I, I think Eric Bledsoe, he just doesn't fit with Giannis. Like, he's a great defender, no doubt about it. But he's just not the fit for Giannis. And Milwaukee's desperate right now, right? Yeah, and, and the Thunder could play off, mm -hmm. you know, a, take a huge gamble on maybe Giannis doesn't go back to Milwaukee. And if he doesn't, those two or three picks that you would be getting in that deal go from late 20s to a lot high lottery pick yeah like for me I just feel like Chris Paul and I just feel like Milwaukee's desperate right now they need to find a way to get Giannis help fast there really isn't any big name out there that they can really get it's, they can't get anybody in free agency because they don't have the cap space unless one of these guys that are free agents decides to take like an MLE right so they need to trade for somebody I don't even know if the contract would work because I know Middleton's getting paid 40 mil. Giannis is probably getting paid like 30 plus mil. Bledsoe's not even near like 30 million. He's probably like at what, like 18 million. So I don't know if it would work, but I think Chris Paul in Milwaukee would probably be the best fit. And I think he'd have a legit chance at winning a championship if he were to go there. I know some people are talking about Chris Paul to the Lakers as well. That wouldn't be a bad move if he could go there. It wouldn't. It, it the same money problem would present itself. Chris Paul to Phoenix, I think that's a good move. I like that. I I'm high on Phoenix, so any any 
veteran players going to Phoenix, I think would be huge for them because I think that's what they're missing is, and they're kind of getting it from Ricky Rubio, but he doesn't have nearly the pedigree that a guy like Chris Paul or Paul Millsap does. And I think that adding that would put them over the top, not obviously championship level, but put them over the top in a sense that they can really compete and they might, you know, give a couple team, a couple legit teams a scare in the playoffs if they got there. I hope that Chris Paul finds, like you said, a championship level landing place because if he doesn't win a championship, I feel like his legacy won't it's be, gonna held be forgotten in the in as high a regard as it should. At, like a guy like John Stockton, he had an incredible career, and looking back on it, I feel like he doesn't get the respect he deserves because he never got that championship. I also feel like it's how John Stockton looks as well. Yeah, <laughs> he doesn't really look like he's a guy that's like was really that yeah. dominant in the yeah. NBA. But yeah, I agree, and I feel like I, I really I would really love for Chris Paul to get a championship. I also like Dallas's landing spot for him if they could get him. But it's it the thing about Chris Paul is that it's not just. Like, yeah, he's good, but he also has injury concerns, especially when getting into the playoffs. Like, am I going to give up this valuable asset who's durable for a guy who's like 35 and gets injured in the playoffs? I mean, he got injured with the Rockets, right? And that's why people say they didn't, yeah, that they didn't win the series. So are you willing to trade that many assets to Chris Paul and pay him $40 million for, for maybe a risk? You know, there's a lot of stuff involved, the politics of the league, right? But, you know, if this is like an NBA 2K model, you do that in a heartbeat, right? Yeah, 100%. But, Turn off injuries yeah, and you're fine. But this is like real life, so it's a really big risk to take a gamble on Chris Paul. That's why with these teams that are contending like Milwaukee, like Dallas, like uh, they, they really can't risk too much because then they're going to really, they're really going to, they're really going to burden their future, right? Yeah. But a team like the Knicks and the Suns, they could take that. And and I was just going to hit on that. As much as I want to see him win a championship, he makes so much more sense for a team that's in the middle of a rebuild. Because like I, everything I said for the Knicks is true for anywhere else he goes. And even if he does have these injury problems, it's like having another front office executive on the roster. And he will make incredible contributions without even stepping on the court. So I think that the more logical landing spot for him would be like a New York where he can do a, a Chicago where he could develop the young talent that they have. Chicago's a good spot too. I didn't even think about that. But I really would I would want to see him win a championship. And it's kind of like a, a heart versus mind type of thing. In my heart of hearts, I want to see him win a championship. But thinking logically. At this stage in his career, it's very unlikely he does. Yeah, especially looking at what he did for the Thunder. He, although he was helpful in them being competitive, his bigger impact there was what he did for Shea Gilgis Alexander and growing that core and the fact that he brought in, you know, a a handful of first picks to add to their unbelievable number of picks that they're going to have to rebuild with. And now, you know, he's going to net them even more. Yeah, basically. 